gonna be a short video on the Land Rover Defender 130 outbound trim level. Jack did the previous videos covering the engineering, some of the technical parts about that, and that's not what this is gonna be focused on. The 130 is the long boy, the largest version of the Defender lineup. There's a 90, a 110, and a 130. The bigger the number, the bigger the vehicle. And the 130 is a three row SUV. It's not a crossover. So you get the off-road capability, you have the boxiness of it, and of course you have the size. The outbound version throws that away in favor of removing the third row and giving you an enormous cargo capacity in the back. The outside of this also has changed. You get standard 20 inch gloss black wheels. The rear windows are blocked out like a panel van and then you have the ladder and the cargo box on the side. It looks more uh, like you're gonna dominate Naperville or Calabasas or Miami, wherever you're gonna live. It definitely has like that urban-ish uh, urban aggressor type look to it, but they still give you the option of making it off-roady. Things like having the off-road package, a towing package, um, you know, th there's things like that. You can option the explore package, the adventure package. It makes it more outdoorsy. This is clearly not gonna be de dominating an off-road park. That's not what it's about. It's supposed to give you the flexibility of not just having a cookie cutter SUV crossover thing. This still has a very strong road presence in this, this trim level. And I think a lot of people that are looking for not wanting to get into a Jeep or a Bronco, this takes it to the next level, which I'm gonna talk about the price. Because when I saw this, I'm like, okay, here we go. Here's another like, like, I'm rich, fuck you, I'm not going off-roading, I'm gonna go to a mall or whatever. That's not where this starts. It really does start around like 85,000. In this trim, it has an inline six and it maxes out around like 99,000 if that's how you wanna spec it out. It comes standard with a base Meridian audio system, some niceties on the inside. You can even get rid of leather on the steering wheel and go for like a vinyl for ruggedness if you're using it outdoors. The, the inside is a good mix between, hey, I am like tough and rugged and there's a luxury options like ambient lighting change, a decent infotainment, there's good leather surfaces if you option it, and amazing storage. That's where I'm gonna, uh, that's where really I'm gonna leave this is the storage inside this thing is amazing for what it is because we've seen a lot of luxury products from like Mercedes, Audi, BMW, where they, they do tend to sacrifice usability in the sake of having a, a pretty interior space. And while this has that kind of faux ruggedness, it feels like a tank on the inside and there's so much, so many places to put things legitimately. So you're not gonna want for storage. Electronics work pretty good in here for a Range Rover, a Land Rover. The infotainment is very, very good to compare to what it used to be. There's even uh, a PM 2.5 meter and it looks at uh, your interior particulate level, which is hilarious because when you're blowing out soot from your inline six out of the back of this thing, at least you're clean on the inside. So there's, there's thought to that in terms of what you're gonna use this for and it really does a pretty good job. Now, the base Meridian audio system is not gonna blow you away despite it having a horizontal array in the door with a larger mid-range and a tweeter in the door. Uh, it tests okay and the bass response is surprisingly really good in here and the upper frequency is really clean. But when you look at the graphs, you'll see from about 200 Hertz to one kilohertz, the mid range is all botched up. And that's partly why it kind of sounds like a tin can in here. Like voices are destroyed. The mid range is just sounds really, really thin. And you, you see it in the graph and you hear it definitely. It's one of the low lights of this and there's no option to upgrade the audio system. So if you're getting the outbound trim to have the look of the outside, you're going to have to make some sacrifices in terms of the interior space or just go right up to the P500 with the V8 where you can max this out with like every luxury feature. Again, this is not trying to be a full luxury vehicle. It's splitting the difference between some of the commodity off-roaders and giving you some of the luxury and the exterior style element to it really stands out. But I'm going to take this for a brief drive and kind of talk you through what that means. Let's talk about it. Here we are, inline six German transmission. Start stop system is slow as hell to respond. You'll notice that it's one of the things that's really irked me about driving this. I turn it off every single time I get in the vehicle, but I'm, I'm gonna cover a few things. One, let's just get real. You're buying this and a lot of people are buying this to lease it because you can write it off as a business expense given its weight, its gross weight. And a lot of people do this and I know the laws are gonna to change to adapt to that, but uh, you know, 
you're going to lease this, you're going to dump it in a few years. So a lot of the practical considerations that you normally consider in buying a car go out the window. Uh, so what is it like? Well, the only thing I can really compare it to is, you know, if you're coming from a luxury SUV, we're talking X7, we're talking SQ7 or Q7s, of it, Cayennes, all that. It's, it's nothing like this. This is way closer to what you're getting out of like a Bronco, a real Bronco or a Jeep. And what they've done is they've given it that truck feel to it. The high ride height, amazing seating configuration in terms of getting high up. You can see everything clearly in here, but it throws away all the driving refinement and finds some middle ground because it does feel quite isolated despite the noisy ass 20 inch tires on here. These all terrain tires, they make a lot of road noise. So if you're looking for a pure, like really good, sharp luxury driving experience, that's not this but it is vastly superior than what you get out of a Jeep and a Bronco. The front end is slow. It feels very, very old school truck-like. It, it, it does not, it's not about reactivity in driving this, but it is still really refined in terms of ride refinement and damping. It, it doesn't jostle you around like body on frame where you feel like you know nothing's screwed together. Everything feels really connected. It's just the responses are really slow. The, the isolation from the road is pretty good despite the tire noise, um, but the drivetrain is, you know, not the most responsive thing. If you really care about drivetrain refinement, you're going to go up to the V8 and you're going to blow a lot more money. You know, how is the inline six in here compared to the other competitors? Like I think of BMW, which is the best in essentially any vehicle with the trans and the engine tuning. That's not this. It's like 50% of what that is. It's more in line with what the CX-90 is trying to do. I would say it's a little bit more refined than that, but um, really, what are you looking to do? Great interior usability, everything's physical. You can put everything where you wanna go. The, the speed at which this accelerates, despite it start stop being really laggy from the start is, is good enough for an inline six. Um, and the road presence and visibility is, is tremendous. It really is like, I was sitting here screwing around with the seats and I'm like, holy shit, can you get up high? And there's so much headroom in here. So if you're a tall person, for example, you can still like get comfortable in here. You can go back, you can go up high, you can get the seat pretty low. And even if you're a small person, despite the steering wheel not going down low enough for me, um, I, I feel really, really safe in here. And I feel like I have a great command of the road that I could do anything. Like I could pitch it off road and just drive through a fence or somebody's front yard hammered and then, you know, just buy them out or just go like on a daily drive and you never notice it. And with the extra space in the back, you really can, you can use this, you can put five international luggages in the back, zero issue. You can still have room for people behind you and they're floating back there. I mean, it really is a usable vehicle considering you're gonna write this off and lease it. Would I, do I think it's better than a full luxury product? In some cases, yes, because it doesn't feel as generic. It doesn't seem as try hard. It has a unique character and personality to it that a lot of vehicles have lost in the truck SUV segment. That's why I like it but I definitely would prefer to have something with a better ride, less tire noise, faster, more smooth, damped across every single pavement type. And this just feels very like lackadaisical to drive, but I think a lot of people are gonna like what it's bringing to the table for like the 85 to 90,000 range as a unique luxury product that is mostly disposable. But I'm gonna leave it at that. Let's get into the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the Defender 130 outbound trim level. Now, clearly it's the same as the 130 with a few changes, right? Like you're buying this because it essentially blacks out the entire exterior. It's very stealth. You get like four color options, white, gray, 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 and black. So tin it out and all that, you're gonna be rolling strong. And I think it does have a great road presence. It's for someone that is tired of the luxury SUV market and even like the regular SUVs, commodity SUVs have turned kind of luxury. So everything's starting to look the same and this it definitely stands out. With all the accessories and crap that you can add onto it, it can be a luxury camper. You can do a lot with it in the removal of the third row, which you know seems counterintuitive, but it adds a shitload of space. So you got that going for you. And of course you're going to lease this, you know, you're not worried about the long-term ownership. Uh, the big takeaway I thought was, you know, everything's so expensive now, everything is like 50 grand in the U S for a new vehicle. So at 85, 90 for a luxury product, it's right in line with everything else. 
it it feels like a tank you know it really does it has a great you know visibility on the inside and while the reflexes are slow and kind of ponderous it's not really in a bad way again this is a different driving experience and if you're looking for that well it does it Thank you.